promo code AFTV free and get free shipping on any order over $30 at CCS.com. Acer's come out with a trio of notebooks, most notable among the bunch. One that features multi-touch support, which is a first for an Acer notebook, to my knowledge at least. Uh, multi-touch, it might, you know, it's been it's caught on cell phones over the last few years, but touch screens in general haven't really fared too well in the PC arena. Is this going to be the thing that changes things along with Windows 7? Let's ask a couple of technology journalists. First off, we bring in John Falcone from CNET. John, thanks for being with us. Sure. Also, we bring in Ross Miller from Engadget. Ross, thanks for being with us as well. My pleasure. So we've seen tablets for a while, and famously, Bill Gates quipped in 2002 at the CES keynote that tablets would be everywhere within the next five years. Everyone would be using a tablet. Obviously, that hasn't come to fruition, though we've seen pen-based computing sort of try to get out of the gate in the last you know, four or five years. Uh, but realistically, uh, you know, Ross, what's going on here? Why do you think tablet computing and touchscreen computing hasn't really taken off the way that it has in the mobile space? Well, there's probably a number of reasons. Um, first one I can think of is software support. There really isn't a lot of applications that have actually like, built drivers. I think a lot of this has to do with Windows um, being the, you know, the primary driving force behind operating systems at this point, not having great support. Even Windows 7, you know, it does a lot, but it's, I don't know, to me it just feels like a gimmick at this point. It's just not going to be enough to really interest people or find a yeah. compelling reason to want to use it. John, what's your take on touchscreen computing in general? And maybe, you know, is this multi-touch thing? Windows 7, to be clear, has better multi-touch support, well, multi-touch support in general, uh, which is, you know, a first. Is, is that going to be something that tips the scales, or do you think we're still, you know, going to be mousing and keyboarding for, you know, many years to come? Uh, I think gimmick is the operative word here. <laughs> uh, I'm not thrilled about touch. Uh, I think one, one reason people seem to be so into it really is just because it sort of looks cool. Um, and I feel like that's largely to do with movies like Minority Report and stuff like that, where people get all excited about touch-based interfaces and, and, and gesture-based stuff because it does sort of look cool from afar. And I always say, try doing that for like five minutes in front of your work computer and, and see if it just wouldn't go insane, basically, even if it worked perfectly. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, are there any use cases, John, that you can think of where this, other than mobile, I guess, where this would kind well, of I, I, be useful? Well, I mean, I think for some specialized uses, sure, it, it'll, it'll probably, it, and that's, it, it might be good. And it's also, I think, important to point out that we just tested, um, it wasn't a laptop, but it was uh, an all-in-one iMac-style uh, HP TouchSmart. Yeah. A uh, Pavilion 600 or something. Yeah. And uh, we gave it an editor's choice because it was definitely... It's a Windows 7 PC. It was the first real all-in-one with a touch screen that really worked and lived up to the premise. Um, the problem is, will people find that useful? Yeah. And uh, I, I still think that's a very open question. You know, we've seen the TouchSmart for a couple of years now, and one of the things that HP had to do in Vista, but also in Windows 7 to some extent, is create their own UI on top of it. I mean. Ross, you mentioned Windows 7 is sort of gimmicky at this point. Do you think that the key to really, you know, pushing things over is almost the rethinking of the way the desktop works and having a specialized uh, new style of interaction with computers? Yeah, I think it's exactly what you're going to have to do. Um, at least because people right now see the desktop and their comfort zone, what they're used to is having a keyboard and a mouse. Um, and everything they want to do, the browser, the... Uh, you know, Photoshop, if they're doing that, is all going to be done based around, you know, keyboard, mouse, and that one instance, maybe a tab, uh, like a separate touch pad, like a tablet pad. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I can't imagine, at least even in this form factor right now, uh, having an all-in-one or a laptop, the screen monitor is just way too far away. Um, I think if you're going to do that, you're going to have to just, um, at least at first, kind of go full nine and let people control it completely without it any way that's comfortable. I don't see any implementation out there right now that really does it. Even the HP um, does leaps and bounds, but again, it's it's nothing that I can imagine using more than maybe like an hour or two yeah. before no, getting frustrated. It definitely feels like, like a living room computer where maybe you'd have it and your guests could come, you know, tap it or play with it or whatever, but it's not really a, uh, you know, it doesn't feel like a business application for sure. And even entertainment, it doesn't feel really like it's uh, totally baked and um, like everything's ready to go. I don't know, real quick, right. John, is there any silver bullet you can see to fix this? 
some sort of killer app that would actually make touchscreen meaningful and useful to go beyond kind of the Wacom tablet crowd that yeah. is probably the only sort of people right now that are really excited about this. Hear that, developers? John's challenging you. Come up with a killer app, or I'm challenging <laughs> you for John. How about that? Anyway, guys, we're going to leave it there because we're out of time. John Falcone from CNET, really appreciate being on the show. Also, Ross Miller from Engadget, thanks for being with us as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm Randall Bennett. Don't forget, you can catch us on iTunes. We're on YouTube. And a special thanks to our sponsor, GoToMeeting. You can get 30 days for free if you go to gotomeeting.com slash techpodcasts. They'll hook you up right there and get you 30 days for free. See you later. <laughs>